This morning I want to talk about the invisible incomes. Now, you may be wondering, well, what, what am I talking about? Well, if you take... When I'm working for a company in the UK and I'm working direct, I actually give away £1,200 minimum a month to the state, to the, to the uh, treasury, to doll scroungers, wherever you want to call it. It's money that comes direct before it even goes in my pocket. If I increase my income within the UK, I will just be paying more. And as such, there's very little benefit. If you've got a partner in the Philippines, and this for vlogging, for example, there's a lot of ways to put money into the internet. Um, it's very difficult to discuss this very openly because I'm, I'm more like putting a, a question mark on your head to think about how you can do it, but also the light bulb to actually turn around and say, it does work. But you can actually keep money offshore. Um, I know Americans have this issue where I think they're taxed globally because a friend of mine pays $75,000 a year in tax to the U.S. Treasury, yet he hasn't been to the U.S. in the last 10 years. Um, so things like having a partner in the Philippines um, and having a PayPal account, etc., may alleviate some of the problems because obviously they do the paperwork themselves. Um, you can have your self-employment, etc. Um, you can have in-laws that do it, etc., etc. There's lots of ways to keep your income offshore. Now, I know somebody's going, oh, shock horror, you're avoiding paying tax. My first job when I left school uh, was working for a company called AS Alarms. It was a security and fire alarm company. The guy there employed his wife as a secretary and his two kids as staff as well, all on full salaries right up to where they had to stop earning money because as soon as it went one pound over, they were into the tax. So everybody, every member of his family were taking an income. So what I'm saying to you, because I know a lot of people think, well, how can I make extra money? Some of it is the money's already there. If I am self-employed, my wife can be my secretary and I can give her a full-time salary. I can have a lot of expenses related around having somebody else being a cost. And I'm not saying defraud the um, tax office or whatever. I'm saying employ your girlfriend, employ your wife to do your accounts. Bit of bookkeeping, bit of reception services, etc., etc. There's nothing that says they have to be in the the UK, US, or wherever. I know it can be a bit awkward sometimes, but the the, the whole cat and mouse with the tax system is the difference between rich and poor. Pay as you earn, which what we call it in the UK, is where you're tax deducted before you even see it is for people that will not fight the tax system. The tax system expects to fight with people that actually are self-employed. This is why they moved away from, oh, you can't have lunches and stuff because you, um, you're you only a JCB driver or whatever. Um, you're not actually mobile. and They take this one, but then they give back somewhere else because it's the way the system has whole, always been. Don't assume that you just have to put up with it. You've got to find the loopholes. Um, and this is why I'm, I'm being quite open in saying that your country has different loopholes for this. One of the ones I would say is like if you're earning online, doesn't need to go to your bank account, um, doesn't need to go to your country even. Um, the money I make on some of the other stuff I do online has put all the new windows in our apartments. It's double glazed on our entire second building. Um, it's completely offshore. Is it my money? The answer is no. Um, I can't say whose money it is, but I may do the work here, but it's volunteering. Um, but the money actually goes into other sources. Do I get any of the money out the the apartments? 
The answer is no, I don't actually bring it back to the West. It actually stays there and upgrades the system. You know, we're going to put in some solar water tanks next and then we're going to put in solar electricity. So I'm not actually drawing money out of this, which means that money it never comes to the West. And in the UK, that's not really my money then, is it? Because I didn't earn it in the UK and I'm not spending it in the UK. And the reason I'm putting this forward is a lot of you guys and girls are looking to retire in the Philippines. A lot of you people think, how can I make extra money? When you should be thinking, okay, I want to do that, but how can I save money? How can I reduce my tax? Is there something I'm doing wrong here? Is it worth me talking to somebody that actually knows the tax system and can advise me on a better way of using it? And the other big, big push on here is the fact is, don't believe what the government tells you. The government doesn't want you going in and actually using your tax ability to avoid paying tax. When I say it's not tax avoidance, Barclays did tax avoidance and they weren't actually doing anything illegal. Um, they just specialised in moving money around. Um, but at the same time, they didn't break any laws. Um, it was just frowned upon. Um, but the, the point here is, what you're actually doing is using the tax system against itself. Those rules, regulations are written there for you to use. Um, the government doesn't like people actually doing this sort of stuff, but at the same time, they're stealing your money by you not doing it. Um, when you have MPs booking a, a what do they call it, that thing on the moat for their, for their um, on MP expenses, they put a, a tree house or something, I think it was a bird house or something, on a moat for £14,000 and run it off taxpayers. Did they care? No. They actually said, it's within the rules, shut your face. And it's the same with everything they get up to. They do it themselves. But what they do is they do this great PR piece with things like... Um, the benefit cheat programs and oh um, they're defrauding this and de they're only defrauding if you're actually doing something illegal this is why you don't get people go oh he's doing this but it's perfectly legal to do that you don't get TV shows going you do realize that you can claim for your uniform dry cleaning you do realize that you're overpaying in tax because your vehicle is not actually used for private use it is purely company use you're paying extra tax on things that you don't need to let us advise you on how to save money you will never see tv shows like that um it'd be nice if they did exist but they don't so i'm just putting this out there is sit there if you're self-employed go and speak to your accountant and say is there anything else i can do to save money on this if you're vlogging and can get your money into somebody else's um, account and like I said I don't spend my money in the UK or whatever so it doesn't really matter but if it's for example um, going to your wife in the Philippines and it's been spending spent on renovating the new house or uh, buying a fridge whatever it is it's offshore now will the Philippines chase it that's up to you um, that's a completely different kettle of fish. Uh, but what I've found so far is that generally the Philippines hasn't caught up with the internet yet. As such, there's a lot of things going on on the internet on a large scale um, that they're not claiming any tax for. It's, it's something to look into. I mean, I'm not going to sit and go through how to do everything on here. I'd be mad to do so. But the whole point is here, I'm trying to open you up to the possibilities that you're paying too much tax already, but anything you earn extra doesn't actually physically need to be taxed as your money, because it isn't yours, is it? Thanks for watching.